Hello, I'm back with another video. Hope you enjoyed the first one. If you didn't, you can press somewhere up here where I'll put the button so you can watch it. Um, yeah, this time I'm talking about how I have mastered the hybrid system in my car. And I've got five tips for you guys. And these tips are not just for hybrid cars, they're for electric cars and regular cars, just so you can get the maximum amount of range using the least amount of fuel slash power, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, here we go. As shown in my last video, the car I own is a Porsche Panamera SE Hybrid. I purchased this through Elite 45 Cars who provide competitive finance rates and quotes. Click the link in the pop-up banner above to check them out. As you can see, I have been caught in a shower. So now my whole point of going inside the car so you can hear the outside noise has been ruined. I'm dedicated so I'm going to give you the tips anyway. So my first tip, and this is the one I feel is the most important, is coasting. When I say coast, I mean releasing the accelerator and allowing the car to carry you through momentum up until a point you do need to press the brake or you do need to resume pressing the accelerator. Let me give you an example. So let's say you're around town and you see a traffic light coming up. You could continue to accelerate and brake once you arrive at the traffic light or you could release the accelerator early and allow the car's momentum to carry you to a point where you do need to press the brake. When you do this, you avoid using unnecessary power that you're just going to lose when you do press the brake and if your car does have a regenerated braking function, you're also going to put the energy back into the battery pack of the car. The less time you spend on the accelerator, the less power you're going to use, the less power you're going to have to waste when you come to stopping. Yeah, coasting. Yes, the storm has stopped. Storm, shower. So, I feel like I can continue. My second tip, something I like to call smart usage of the hybrid system. I literally just made that up, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me just carry on because we'll just be sitting here forever if I wait for the weather in this country to be perfect. So like I was saying, smart usage of the hybrid system in your vehicle, if that's what I did say. <laughs> smart usage of the hybrid system. When I do travel to London, I've planned out the journey in a way that I know where it'll be more beneficial for me to use the hybrid electric system and where it'll be more useful for me to use the petrol system of the car. So what I do is I leave my house on electric mode only. I drive all the way up to the motorway, which is about a two, two and a half mile journey. I accelerate up to 70 miles an hour in electric mode. Then when the car does get to 70 miles an hour, I then engage the engine. This way, I have not used a massive amount of energy warming up the engine as I travel towards my destination. I haven't used a massive amount of energy building up um, to 70 miles an hour. And also, the beginning of my journey is a lot of stop starting. So I don't need to stop the car and then reinitiate the movement, moving a massive amount of weight, using a lot less power. So by doing this, I've got my 50 odd mile journey to London to about 50 miles a gallon. And when I say about 50 miles a gallon, I mean pretty consistently is at 50, 51 miles a gallon. Tip number three. This is another important one. They're all kind of important, so I don't know why I'm saying one's more important than the other, but yeah, anyway. Tip number three. <laughs> and this one is very obvious. If your car is a plug-in hybrid, plug it in. Do not rely on the engine to charge it. Do not rely on regenerative braking to charge it. Plug it in. What I've noticed is that when I do use the e-charge function, so when I do use the internal combustion engine to charge the battery pack, the car uses a hell of a lot of fuel. And when I say a hell of a lot, I've seen my miles per gallon drop by 15 over a 15 minute period of charging the battery with the internal combustion engine. It takes a lot of power to move a car and it takes a hell of a lot of power to put energy into a battery pack at the same time. Tip number four is cruise control. I've noticed personally that when I do use cruise control, my miles per gallon are a lot higher than when I do use my foot. And I'm not saying this because I've gotten a heavy foot because I haven't. But when you are on the motorway, use cruise control. If you're around town and there's parts where you can just go 20 miles an hour for extended periods of time or 30 miles an hour for extended periods of time, use cruise control. I've also noticed that when the electric motor is using cruise control, the car can keep the power usage very low to maintain that same speed. As opposed to when I'm using my foot to maintain that same speed, it seems as if the car gives me more energy than is required and then the battery goes down faster. So, yep, again, cruise control. Trust me, it does wonders. If you want to test it, drive out there one day, I don't know, to your next town and use um, your foot on the accelerator. The next day, go and use cruise control. I guarantee you'll see a difference. Tip number five, and this one is actually very important. I've actually said that about every single tip, so let me just say 
forget I've said that at any point during this video. Anyway, tip number five, air conditioning. Try to avoid using the air conditioner or the car's climate control system as much as possible. The way I do this is that when it's warm, I just either open my sunroof or lower my windows. That way I stay cool as I move the car along. I did notice that after doing this, I get significantly more range out of a full charge of my car. I mean, when I say significantly more, I mean about two to three miles more in summer. The battery also seems to last a lot longer. And I know that when the car is warm, when the battery pack is warm, you do get more performance as for you do get more range. But I've noticed a clear difference to when I am using the air conditioning unit and when I'm not using the air conditioning unit. So those are my five tips for increasing your range. I actually have a bonus tip for you guys, but this may not benefit everyone, but I did notice it does benefit me. And that is use performance fuels. And what I mean by that is, you know when you get to the petrol pump and then you see one that's cheap and then you see one that's not cheap, automatically you wanna to go to the cheap one. But what I did notice is that when you do use the more expensive one, you do get more range out of the car. I've also noticed that audibly, audibly, audibly? Audibly? I've also noticed that audibly my car sounds a lot smoother when it's running. That's not just from the engine, that's from the exhaust note as well. As you know from my last video that you should have watched, if not click here. I have a custom exhaust on my car. Once I started putting the high performance fuels, it became a lot smoother, it became a lot crisper, the sound, it just became easier on the ear. It also feels as if the car pulls away a lot faster and I did notice I do get better miles a gallon on the motorway. For example, on the M40, which I use very often, there's a uphill part where you go through like almost a canyon. Before, when I was using the standard fuels, the car would shift down into seventh to uh, maintain speed up that hill. So it'll be at 70 miles an hour. I'll be in eighth gear, it'll shift down to maintain that 70 miles an hour. Once I started using the performance fuel, the car stays in eighth gear and takes me up the hill with no problems at all. It does rev a bit higher when it's in eighth, but trust me, is way better than it kicking down a gear and then revving massively high. So yeah, performance fuels, I've noticed it makes a difference. I'm not sure if that's just because I've got a performance engine, but I feel as if you will notice it makes a difference. Maybe not on the first attempt, but maybe clear your tank out a few times and just keep using them. I promise if you have a performance engine, you should notice a difference. So I know that video wasn't as entertaining as my last one, but yeah, sometimes you just gotta give people the tips to improve their life. I feel like these should improve your hybrid life. Um, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see more things like this, subscribe. I've got more car reviews coming soon, more information for you guys on random facts, and yeah, see you soon.